So a patron of mine, Edward, recently asked, Hey Tick, can you tell us, how do you have so much energy to do so much work every day? Thanks. So I've given this a lot of thought, and I came up with 17 different things that I do, which I think make me very productive as a person. So I've decided to provide you those 17 different things in the form of tips. And hopefully if you apply all of these, you will become very productive as well. So let's get on with it. But here's the deal. You said energy. You said energy. How do I have the energy for work? Why did you use the term energy? It, it, you know, we may as well use the term motivation. We may as well use the term, all these other terms, the fancy terms that mean, yeah, I need to be inspired to do something. Really? So if you're about to run a marathon, okay, what do you need? You need energy. If you're about to hammer a nail into a piece of wood, you need energy. If you're fired up, like, yeah, I'm really motivated, I really want to do this, and then, you know, you go and sit down, well, you're not going to be in the frame of mind to do any intellectual studying or research or anything like that. You're not going to be in the right frame of mind to actually do the work that is necessary for, you know, intellect, studying, uh, accountancy, something like that, okay? Because I've worked physical labor jobs and I can run around all day, no problem. Can I sit down and study for 12 hours a day? Uh, it's a little bit different, okay? So here's the deal. I actually think that energy is the wrong word and that's not what you need. If anything, you need a lack of energy. You need to be like, I'm going to sit down now and do some work. That's not energy. That's just a different mentality, I think. And so I want to get you into a different frame of mind before we go into these tips. So think about it this way, right? So if you're on a date or if you've met somebody new and they go, oh, what do you do? Okay. And you go, oh, I'm a engineer, right? I'm a student. I'm a fireman. I'm a baker. It's like, okay, hold on a sec. You are what you produce. Okay. I bake bread. You're a baker. I'm a student. You study. Okay. You don't become a student and don't. Just because you don't, you know, you just, I'm now a student. Like, okay, I'm now an astronaut, right? That's not how it works. You are what you produce. Now, some people produce physical goods, bakers bake, you know. Uh, some people produce services. People with, you do haircuts, cuts hair, right? That's a service. People who serve on a, on a counter at a, at a shop, they're a cashier because they're getting cash from the customer, right? So you may not necessarily produce something per se, you might provide a service or an idea or whatever, but you are still producing something, right? A writer is not a writer unless they write. A student is not a student unless they study. And a worker is not a worker unless they work. And ultimately, we define who we are by what we produce, what service we provide, what ideas we put forth into the community. So I'm a historian because I except for today's video, I produce history, right? That's the reason why. I'm also a YouTuber because I produce YouTube videos, right? You can compare other YouTubers out there who don't produce videos very often and wonder why their channels aren't expanding. The greatest decision I made was to make a video every Monday because it was like, you know what? I can't wait for Tick Mondays because I'm going to get a video from Tick. It's like, that's why. If you don't produce on a regular basis, you have failed. You're not producing. And so it's, you can't claim to be a writer if you don't write. You can't claim to be a YouTuber if you don't YouTube, right? That's how it works. So if you are a student or if you are a worker or whatever job you have, which is requiring physical and or mental work or whatever, if you don't do the thing that you're doing, you are not whatever it is you claim to be. So the mentality you need to have for starters is to produce. It doesn't matter how you produce the thing as long as you get it done. And wouldn't it be nice if you did it in an easy way? It's not too hard. You get it done very quickly. You know, not, not too quickly to it's a disaster, but quick enough that you're not wasting too much time on the project and, you, and it's easy and it's kind of fun as well at the same time. Because if you're going to produce, that's the best way to do it, right? Is to do it nice, easy, fun. That's the, that's the mentality we need to have. It's okay, I need to produce something, 
need to do it the best ways possible, right? So that this is the point. You are what you produce. If you produce nothing, you are nothing, right? That's the way we've got to look at this. So it all comes down to work ethic. My work ethic is I want to do the best, easiest, fastest way possible. And this is generally, although it's still ongoing, this is generally the tips I have for you because this sort of stuff works. So let's get into the tips. Tip number one is choose. You need to choose to do work. Some people go, oh, I have to go to work tomorrow. It's like, sounds like you're a slave. Like, no, you don't have to go to work. You don't have to go to university. You don't have to do anything. You can rot in the street if you like. Like, there's no, nothing is stopping you from just quitting your job and just dying, right? Nothing is stopping you doing that. You can do that. You can go and jump off a cliff. People do that, right? There's nothing stopping you. You're making a choice to go to work. Why are you going to work? Because I need money. Because I want education. Because I want to do whatever. It's like, well, that's what you're doing it for. So you may, you're choosing to do that. It's not, I have to. No, you don't have to. You don't have to have a house. You don't have to have a family. You don't have to have a car. You don't need any of those things. You can regress back into the woods if you like, right? Go, feel free to do that. For the rest of us, let's choose to do work. And this is also when you sit down to do work, you need to choose to do it. You know what? I could play computer games today. But now that I think about it, I'm going to choose to do work. You've made the choice. No, I have to do it. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. You're going to choose to work. That's the mentality you need to have. Actually, I need to choose to do work. So when you get to that stage and you think, oh, oh I have to do... No, no, choose. I am choosing to do work. I'll keep repeating it so you get it right. Choose. Second tip is good night. If you haven't had eight hours of sleep, you're killing yourself. According to why we sleep uh, and the Joe Rogan podcast, I recommend either the book or the Joe Rogan podcast with this author. Um, but yeah, basically, if you don't have eight hours sleep, you're killing yourself. And not only are you killing yourself, you're not going to be able to do the work because you're just not going to be in the right frame of mind. Uh, and so I try to meet, so I get eight hours of sleep every night. I used to work in retail and I used to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning and then sometimes work to stupid o'clock at night. And by stupid o'clock, I mean 5 a.m. or sometimes 4 a.m. Uh, and it's taken me actually a year to finally, as of two weeks ago, maybe uh, a week ago or so ago, to actually get out the mentality of getting up too early and actually start having eight hours of proper night's sleep. And I can tell you now, my productivity is a lot better now that I've had good night's sleep. Good night's sleep is essential if you're going to do any sort of work. It doesn't matter if it's physical, mental, or whatever else. You need to have sleep. So if you're neglecting, I can exist for four hours a day. No, you can't. You cannot. Get eight hours of sleep. Sort it out. Go to bed early. <laughs> so the third tip is eat. Now, this will probably be a controversial one because there's so many diets out there, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to give you what I know to work based on the evidence that it worked for me. So here's the deal. I, at New Year, I went on a low-carb, high-fat diet. So generally low-carb. Um, and I lost a stone in five weeks, which is amazing. <laughs> right? Didn't need to lose a lot. I'll be honest, I wasn't fat, but I need to lose something. Um, I'm, I'm well over a stone lighter than I was six months ago. Let's say that way. And it's because of this diet. Not only is the low carb good for you anyway, but also the high fat will give you the persistent energy, a long-term energy rather than the short burn energy like sugar, okay? And also, it's not just this, because I know people will complain about it in the comment section. If you're high on sugar, which it is a drug at the end of the day, if you're high on sugar or if you are high on caffeine, okay, um, you know, you've had too much caffeine that you're shaking, blah, blah, blah. you know, you're not going to be in the right men mentality to sit down and do the work. If you're like so hyper and you think of a thousand things because you, you've eaten that much sugar, you're not going to sit there and do the work, right? So actually eating right is the right way to go and you need to cut down on sugar and you need and carbohydrates, which are the same thing basically, and you need to eat better food, which doesn't necessarily give you the short burst of energy, but actually the long burst of energy and the low carb, high fat diet 
with little to no caffeine and also little to no alcohol, right? Because I was there in university with a girl who, um, she was known as the JD kid. She was one of my housemates. She might be watching this video. Hi. Uh, who had three rows of empty JD bottles, right? Jack Daniels bottles all the way around the room. Three, three deep. Okay, she was known as the JD kid. <laughs> Didn't do so well in her exams, I'll be honest. Uh, so all I would just say is, look, just don't don't take it to extreme. I drink once a month if I'm lucky. Um, if actually if I'm unlucky, and it wakes me out for a couple of days. You know, this hungover the next day, and then the day after, it's like ugh, I have no energy because you know I've used it all basically. So I would recommend, and it also impacts your sleep. So I would recommend, look. I'm not saying give up everything. Uh, don't have any coffee, but just limit it. Reduce the amount and eat right. Because then if you've got the right energy, the right energy for what you're doing, you'll do it, right? That's the whole point. It's about not overloading yourself with sugar, caffeine, alcohol. So you're like, and, you, and you're not, because you're not going to do the work. You're not going to do the work. You want slow burning energy and you want to be able to concentrate. And a lot of that is diet and obviously sleep as well. Fourth tip is space. Uh, go to space. No, set up your space. So here I have a desk. It's a standing desk. And I deliberately put it together, set it up, got whatever else, in order to do the work. This is the work room. If I come in here, I do work. Um, when I was at university, uh, there was basically three floors to the library. I used to go to the top floor, which is the quiet zone. Um, I used to sit in the corner there was a window, it overlooked uh, basically a park area, which was kind of like the back of the university. Very few people ever walk in there, but there's a little path, um, very nice view. I sat there with my books, you know, I brought all my books ready and uh, my pens, had a drink, some crisps, whatever else. Behind me, immediately behind me were bookshelves. It was the economics section, which is great because I can just pick a book up and get on with it. Um, which I did sometimes, but uh, it's also where nobody would ever go because <laughs> not that many people are interested in economics, apparently, uh, which is a shame. So it was great. I was in the middle of nowhere, you know, no one's around, I barely hear anybody else. Perfect, quiet, absolutely perfect. A uh, little bit of a desk, you know, a nice seat, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, own space, own place. It's fantastic. So what I'm, what I'm saying is what I recommend is that you set up your own place. Take take some time, find a library, find a coffee shop, find, well, not even a coffee shop, that's a bit too much uh, noise, but find somewhere, a workshop, a place to go to, where, which is relevant to your job or your study or your work, whatever it is, find a place that you can, that can be yours. And when you go to that place, it's work time and make it work time. Because the next point, tip number five, is eliminate. So this is going to be the controversial one. You need to get rid of all of your distractions 100%, okay? As if they were John Connor and the Terminator, right? You need to eliminate them. You need to terminate them. Um, because this is where most people go wrong. What I recommend is that you take your phone, don't put it in your pocket, that's the worst thing you can do because studies have shown that actually your brain or your mind is still on the thing because it's thinking, oh, I better check my Facebook now or whatever. No, turn it off, put it on silent, throw it in another room, put it in your bag, do whatever you need, just get rid of the damn thing. Don't get it in eyesight, don't put it under a book, put it, just get, get rid of the damn thing, right? Best thing that ever happened to me was when I lost my phone for a week. Well, I lost it and then I was without for a week and it was fantastic. Best week of my life. Uh, literally was, it was amazing. Um, because it was like, oh, I don't have to worry about anything because no one can contact me. Um, if they want, if I'm, if they're really desperate, they can go and find me, right? Fantastic. Um, when I worked in retail and I was a manager, uh, when I rose up the ranks, one of the other managers, the the boss, shall we say, he was basically like, you need to be on WhatsApp and you need to be, you you know, contacting me constantly, telling me about updates and all this other stuff. So the managers were all the uh, WhatsApp in the office, you know telling them how much work they've been getting done and all this. And it's like, you're not doing any work because you're too busy on the WhatsApp or on the whatever, whatever device and whatever app communicating between, you know, emails. What the hell? Why? What is the purpose? Right? I know some jobs are quite, no, no, 
let's get rid of it because think about it. Like if you're replying to a message, you're not working. You're not. I mean, you're not doing it, right? It, it, unless it's essential, you shouldn't be doing it. And that's the mentality you need to have. So, oh, somebody's texted me. I need to reply right now. You know, if people have got those watch um, phones. It's like, oh, oh. It's like, stop. Take that damn thing off and throw it in the trash. You, you just stop it because you're just getting distracted. It's just distraction after another, one after another. If, you, if somebody can't wait for half an hour or an hour or 10 hours for a message from you, there's something wrong with them. Okay, and if you're too busy replying to messages, you're not going to get any work done. It's it's wrong. I honestly think it should be zero. If you're doing work, no communication. That's how it should be. If somebody wants to communicate, it's a really desperate situation. They can either come, you know, find you or send a pigeon because at the end of the day, it can't be that bad. There's nothing in the world. You know, if something's going terribly wrong, they should be able to deal with it, right? That's the way I look at it anyway. So, or they can wait a day or till the end of the day, right? So, and this is also why for my patrons out there and my um, subscribe starians, you might be going, oh, he's not replied on Patreon for God knows how long. It's like, yeah, because I'm working. Because ultimately, you know, you guys are donating, let's get the list up. You guys are donating money to this channel to make this channel work. If I don't work, if I'm, it sounds horrible, if I'm too busy replying to you guys, I'm not doing any work. The priority here is work. And, and ultimately you'll go, why did I donate to this guy? He doesn't, he, he stopped publishing on Mondays and he's, because I couldn't get the work done because I was too busy. Repl- like, you know, yeah, this is a, a social media. This is a social media platform. But ultimately I'm saying, no, the videos come first because that's what I'm, I am what I produce. If I don't produce these YouTube videos, then I am nothing, right? That's the idea. So I need to prioritize the work and that's what I'm doing. So if I'm not replying to you, it's not necessarily because I'm ignorant. It's because you guys are donating or supporting this channel so that we can get the damn work done at the end of the day. That's the reason why. So the priority for everybody is to get rid of distractions and also no games, computer games, right? No music. So if you've got a computer game on your phone, oh, just get the computer game out. You know, you're going to be on it for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. You're not going to get any word done. No music. There's a famous book by the animator who did uh, Who Frames Roger Rabbit. And he asked his mentor back in the day, hey, uh, what music do you listen to while you do your animations? And the, the mentor turns around and says, what are you stupid? I don't listen to music. That's too distracting, right? And it's absolutely brilliant. I, lo- I love it. When I saw that, I was like crying. It's so true. If I'm listening to Metallica while I'm trying to do research, I'm not going to be in the frame of mind to do the damn research, am I? You know, I know there's like instrumental music, you know, they're nice and relaxing or whatever else. But in general, music kind of hypes me up at least. And I get the energy to go and run a marathon. Yeah, you know, imagine listening to Rocky, you know. Like, it's just, you know, you can't. Um, and for whatever reason, I find, like, metal and jazz, these things get me hyped up. So, again, we want calmness. We don't want energy, right? So eliminate the music. Don't listen to music at all. Don't listen to the radio if you're in, you know, the 80s or something. Don't listen to anything 100% focus on the task. Don't even attempt yourself. Don't put YouTube on. No games, nothing. Absolutely nothing. You want to be in a position where there's nothing else to distract you. The only thing you can actually do is the work that's in front of you. Tip number six is challenge. So what I'm going to give you is this idea of a deadline or a schedule. So what you need to do is say, I'm going to publish YouTube videos every single Monday and regardless of whether the internet goes out or not, which it did this week, and I thank God it's back on, uh, we can. I will actually publish a video every single Monday, irregardless, right? Regardless of what happens, and you need something like that as well. This week I'm going to do this essay. Next week I'm going to do this particular project. I'm going to paint this picture. I'm going to, I don't know, sell a thousand. Um, products to whoever, right? You're going to have a schedule, you're going to have a deadline. I'm going to perform this task by this time. 
don't be too hard on yourself. Like have a challenge, but don't make it ridiculously challenging. Um, I used to do really intense videos every week until I basically went, I can't do this anymore. Hence the Q&A videos. I'm going to keep it like this because once, one big massive video per week was way too much, uh, if I'm honest. But every other week is now sustainable, I think. So the challenge is still there. I still have to produce Monday videos. However, it's not overwhelming. And that's kind of what I'm doing. But here's the deal. When I didn't have the schedule, okay, I couldn't do it because I wasn't full time. But here's the deal. It was like, well, I can leave it to another week. Oh, I can make this video a bit more perfect than it actually is. You know, and that's wrong. You want to actually have something to aim for every week. And in regards to the fact whether it's perfect or not, you've got to hit that deadline. You've got to hit it. So whether it's perfect or not, publish, right? Uh, and this is the mentality, because if you think, oh, I need to get this finished and it needs to be absolutely perfect, you'll never publish it, right? Oh, I better I better write this book, but I'm going to write like a word a day, because if I don't, you know, do, oh, I need to really think about this next paragraph. It's like, no, get it written, don't get it right, okay? That's actually a famous phrase from um, back in the day. Uh, the guy who did NaNoWriMo, National Mother Writing Month, which is actually... A really good thing for you guys if you want to do it. the idea is that you publish uh, a book in a month or not publish you write a book in a month 50,000 words that's 1,667 words a day who cares what it right just write it right so that's the the advice to give you don't get it right get it written well in this case it's don't get it right get it done by the deadline <laughs> tip number seven is plan I wasn't very good at this back in the day, but I worked on it. And honestly, it's the best thing I've ever done. If you plan something in advance, then you've got a chance, right? So the night before, think about what you're gonna do the next day. Spend half an hour, 20 minutes, not even that. Plan it out. Think, what am I gonna to do tomorrow morning? What am I gonna do in the afternoon? What am I gonna do in the evening, right? And use Google Calendar. Um, it's free, it's dead easy. You have to do it in half an hour chunks, which is a bit annoying, but it's very, very good for planning out your day. That's what I use. And what I tend to do is go, well, tomorrow I'm going to do Stalingrad research. The day after I'm going to do Curland. The day after that, and not even that, sometimes I go, you know, tomorrow morning I'm going to do Stalingrad. Tomorrow afternoon I'll do the map for Curland. The, the, the evening I will do whatever I want. Okay, plan out your day the way that you want it to go. And, you know, some people are night owls, so you might not want to do it in the morning. You might want to leave, leave it till the evening or whatever you want to do. You plan it out, but you plan it. You And you not only plan what you're going to work on, you're going to plan your relaxation time as well. Okay, I'm going to have a couple of hours of computer games in the evening. That's fine. I'm going to have a couple of hours going to see my mum or whatever. I'm going to have a day off today. I'm going to do whatever. And you plan it out in advance. Plan the week. Plan the night before. And don't be afraid to move it around. If, if something goes wrong or you know, something comes up or, oh, actually, this took longer than I thought, then you can change the schedule and move it on, but you've got to plan it. And there's a lot of videos out there about how to plan. I recommend it, but absolutely 100% plan because if you know what you're going to do in advance, you get psyched up for it, so you're ready to do it. If I know that tomorrow's going to be a Stalingrad day, oh, oh, it's all good. It's going to get, ha it's going to just happen, right? It's going to be brilliant because I get excited for it. I'm like, yes, I'm going to do Stalingrad tomorrow fantastic so and you're in the right if you get up in the morning because i've done this before when i didn't realize that planning the night before is actually better it's like okay i'm gonna sit down now now what i'm gonna do today uh like i haven't thought about it and so you procrastinate a bit it's like no let's not do that let's get ready by planning it out in advance and that's brilliant tip number eight is digitize this is mainly for the old people in the audience or people who still for some reason like to use paper this is the third millennium, Google Docs exists, okay? Google Docs, uh, Google Sheets, Google uh, Drive, Google uh, Slides, you should be using this or something similar. There's Evernote apparently, there's other ones. I'm not, I'm not gonna recommend the one. I think Google Drive is the best, it's free, so just go and get it. But digitize, 100%, absolutely 100%, you need to digitize. Recently, the boiler people came, they had to replace the boiler, I had to go to Costa to do some work. Okay, I got the work done, I got it to paper, right? Then I took it over and I'm like, it's stacked there now, I've, I've barely gone through it because I can't put it into Google Drive. 
So it's like, ah, oh, I've got to basically do the work twice because if I'm writing an essay or, you know, for this channel or whatever, my narrative, I need the notes in digital format. Otherwise, it's just not going to work because how am I going to make an essay? Because I need multiple sources going into the same document. How can I do that if I have some of it on paper? It doesn't make any sense. So I'm basically doing the job twice, if not three times, if I don't digitize it. Um, it's much quicker to edit. It's much quicker to put them all together into one file if you need to do it, like what I do. It just makes a lot more sense. You can carry it around with you. Phones, uh, computers, laptops, Xboxes now probably. It's the, it's the third millennium. If you don't know how, learn it. Digitize. 100% don't just don't. If you're still working on paper now, you're, 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 you're out of date because ultimately you're going to be left behind by everybody else who does know how to use the digitization. So... If you want to work now, digitize. Tip number nine is organize. So you need to be organized in a few different ways. So let's say you're going to a library, pack your bags the night before, right? Don't leave it to the morning. Get everything ready the night before. Have I got my pen or two? Get two pens. Uh, if you got a laptop, have I got my laptop? Have I got my charger? Have I charged the laptop? Or have I got my USB drive? Have I got my whatever books I need or the books of the library have I got whatever it is that you need to do organize yourself within Google Docs organize folders okay I've got this project going and this project going and this project going so let's not dump it all in the same folder on, the, on our desktop or uh, Google Drive let's use folders so this is project A this is project B project C and then inside that we've got subfolders this is project A's Research, this is Project A's script, this is Project A's notes, this is Project A's whatever, right? That split it up into several different subfolders within folders. It's hard to explain it, but organize yourself in a way. Now, this comes back to the planning um, in part, but it also, while you're doing it, think, okay, do I, should I use the same docs file, okay, same writing file, for the notes and the research and the and the and the and the, uh, the essay itself and all this other stuff, or should I split that up into several different note files? Yes, you should. Oh, does this is this better on a spreadsheet or in a in a docs file? Spreadsheet. Let's do it. Right. You think think ahead and go. Actually, don't put too much in one place. Split it up a little bit because if you do that, it becomes more organized. Oh yeah, I need that thing. I just find that thing. Um, don't put it all into one file. Like you see those screenshots where it's like a bazillion things on the screenshot uh, on the desktop of somebody's laptop or whatever. If you compare that to mine, oh, okay, right, organized. Um, and if you if you look at my let's say Google Drive's file, you can see how the files are organized slightly differently to a lot of other people's who just dump everything in one go. So I would really highly recommend you organize yourself and get it done in advance if you possibly can do it. It is related to the planning. Um, it's also just thinking ahead, I guess, is the way to think about it. And sometimes this organization goes out of whack. That's fine. Spend a little bit of time reorganizing, you know, moving things around. You can plan to do that if you want. That's fine. Just, just make sure you're organized because if it's sloppy, messy mind, you know, and messy desktop, you're going to be distracted. You're going to be distracted. Oh, where did I put that thing again? Let's, let's minimize that by using a proper organizational structure. Number 10, split. So what do I mean by this? So like this project here, for example, I split this up into 17 different sections, maybe at the beginning as well, a bit more. So I'm splitting it down and I've got it down to one word, right? What I'm saying is if you have an elephant, right? How do you eat an elephant? One chunk at a time, one piece at a time, one spoonful at a time. Split your work down. If you're like, oh no, I've got this massive Stalingrad documentary to make, you're going to be overwhelmed. You never start the damn thing. If you go, I can read a book. Oh, actually, I can read a page. Or oh, actually, I can read a sentence. Or oh, I can read a word. I can I can write one letter. I can type in something, you know. sit When you sit down to do work, don't think, oh, I've got all this work to do. Because you just get overwhelmed by it. Think, what is the next, the very next thing that I need to do? Oh, I just need to read that chapter of a book. Okay, chapter, start reading. 
Oh, I need to bang the nail into a piece of wood. All right, bang it in, right? It's one step, oh, what do I need to do now? Well, I need to wash the dishes. Okay, wash one dish at a time, right? If you try and wash everything at the same time, you're gonna, you're gonna have a, a real tough time. So the point is you split it up into different chunks. What I had, uh, this is related to some of the other stuff we already mentioned. Uh, I had classmates or yeah, colleagues uh, in uh, university and I can remember them now, there was, there was two of them, they were sat at the desk, they had 20 different books out, all spread open and spread out. They had the laptop going, they had music in their ear, drinks everywhere, you know, 17 cups of coffee. Um, they're on Facebook, they're talking amongst themselves, they're doing all this, they're writing it out at the same time. You can't do that. You can't do it. What are you, what are you doing? Right? When I, when I... When I approach a topic, I go, right, I'm going to do the research first. And I'm going to look at one book at a time. And I'm going to look at one page at a time. Because there's no point having 60... Right, if you sit down to do an essay and you're going, I haven't done any research. Oh, look, that screen's blank. It's going to stay blank, okay? Because you've not done the research. If you can't think of something to write, then you haven't done any research. You need to get the research, one book. I'm going to read this book or this chapter, because you don't want to read the whole thing. Read one chapter of the book and go, I'm going to just read what I need to know. Find out what I need to know. I'm going to make notes on this, not, not, I'm doing, I'm going to make notes on this, right, on the digitization thing. And I'm going to do one thing at a time. I'm not going to look at 17 books. I'm going to look at one book, focus on that, not get distracted by anything else. Because that's the thing, if you have like 16 books out, you're going to get distracted, right? If you're trying to do notes and research and write the script at the same time and edit video and reply on Facebook and listen to music and you, you, it's just going to happen, is it? So split it down into as small a chunks as possible. Okay, I need to do the research first. Fine. Notepad or computer, whatever. Book. Done. Once that book's done, get the next one out. Put the other one away, right? One thing at a time. Once you've done that, write your essay. Once you've done that, Print it out, right? Once you've done that, go and get a thing and put it in the box, whatever you need to do. Split it up into smaller chunks. That's absolutely essential. And if, if you're like, oh no, I need to do this next thing and I don't know what to do, it's probably too big. It's, you're probably thinking too big. Stop, go, actually, how can, I, how can I reduce this to one little simple task? Okay, like, oh, what do I, oh, how do I get this energy to, for work whiteboard going? I'll just do the first word, energy. Just do the first word. You can do that. You can at least do that. That's the one thing you can do. Because if you split it down into chunks, it's just like a, a load of simple steps then on what to do. One little step. And also, if you split it up, it becomes kind of like a game. Oh, I can do one word. Oh, I can do the next word. How can I, quick can I write this word, right? How quick can I type it? How quick can I read this chapter? How quick can I understand, oh, if I think about this concept, right? Whatever it is you're doing, split it down into smaller chunks, it makes it so much easier. That is probably actually one of the biggest tips on here. So tip number 11 is start. So we've chosen to work. We've had a good night's sleep. We've eaten well. We've got our space. Uh, we've eliminated all distractions. We've challenged ourselves to a deadline. We've planned ahead. We've digitized ourselves we've organized and we've split the project down but yet we're sat there and we still don't want to start because we've got so much on our mind and oh i need to pick the kids up from school oh i've got this going on somebody's died in the family this has happened that's happened uh, oh i could be playing computer games right now oh i wish i had chosen a different subject i wish should i apply for a different job i hate my co-workers, da-da-da, whatever it is. And this is why I said about the energy and having a good night's sleep and eating right and all this other stuff. All this has been eliminated and you are now in a position where you can calm. You can calm yourself down, right? Just start the thing, whatever it is, okay? And this is actually related to tip number 12, which I've deliberately left blank, okay? This is... Empty. Empty your mind, okay? I've used this quote before. Uh, Bruce Lee, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water, right? And he gets that from Sun Tzu. The point is, if you empty your mind and have nothing in it, I don't need to worry about the kids. I don't need to worry about work. I don't need to worry about 
um, how much I'm going to get done. I don't need to worry if it's going to be perfect. I don't need to worry about my co-workers. I don't care that, you know, somebody's spilt coffee down themselves or whatever over the... Just calm. Empty your mind. You've eaten well. You've slept well. You've got eliminated all distractions. You've split it up. You know what needs to be done. You don't need to worry about anything else. Okay? Just start and and just focus on the thing. Clear your mind. And the best way, you know, the, in a sense, it's kind of like meditation. You should see work as kind of meditation. It's not always going to be, sometimes it's going to be hard, sometimes it's going to be easy, whatever. You can't, you can't get around that. But don't worry about anything else. And kind of, if you clear your mind, if you like a meditation, I don't do meditation, but I know a lot of people do, and I know the premise behind it. The idea is to, you know, sit there and, and not think of anything else and clear your mind and become present in the moment. That's kind of the way this is. So it's not meditation, but it's kind of like, okay, I need to do some styling guide research. I don't care if, you know, I hate Joe and Joe hates me and we're having an argument today. How about I just get on with the work? How about I just get on with the work? How about I just empty my mind, forget about the argument I'm having with a friend or whatever, and just get on with it. Just do it. Right? I can worry about that later because tip number 13 is Pomodoro. I'm sure that your husband or wife can wait 25 minutes without you. I'm pretty sure that you can find 25 minutes to do a particular task. I'm pretty sure no one in the world, none of your friends, none of your family, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your whatever, no one's going to care for 25 minutes that you are not answering the, your phone. You're not doing, you know, anything else. You are focused entirely on your work. So Pomodoro, I've talked about this before, is a technique where you set a timer. Uh, go to tomatotimer.com, I think it is. You set a timer for 25 minutes. You work for 25 minutes. You don't do anything else. You know, as soon as that timer goes, you go, oh, yeah, let's see how much work I can get done. And you just focus 25 minutes. Once the timer goes off, you can have a five-minute break. And you do another 25 minutes. And you have a five-minute break. And then you do 20, 25 minutes more. And then you can... That's your Pomodoro session, in a sense. So it's, it's basically an hour and a half. Um, when I was working at my previous job, I came home every day or even before I went to work, depending on the time of the work, uh, I would do one Pomodoro session, which was three half an hours, or three 25 minutes with five-minute breaks, of Stalingrad research. And very, very quickly, I cut to over 300,000 words, right? It's surprising how much you can get done in small chunks of 25-minute sessions, okay? Pomodoro, if you haven't looked at this, you haven't used it before, this is the technique you use. And here's the deal. Once you've set that timer going and you're used to Pomodoro, like me now, I don't stop for those five-minute breaks. I just work. Because once I've started work, because this is the deal, this, these three are kind of related. Once I've started work, I've cleared my mind of distractions and I've got the Pomodoro timer going and I'm just focused on that work. What have I, what have I got to lose? What, are, what else is there? I'm focused, okay? Um, and this is, this is related to the choose uh, tip as well. I've chosen to do the work <clears throat> and it's now got to the point with me. So I used to be a big gamer. I, this is how this channel started. I loved gaming. I no longer find games as appealing as they used to be. I occasionally play games. I might play for an hour, maybe two, and I get bored of it. I actually get bored of it. And a lot of the times I spend myself going, you know, I've had enough of work today. I'm going to just have a bit of a relaxing evening and I'm just going to play a computer game. And I find myself absolutely, I can't choose the game that I want to play. I'm just like, and I end up not playing in the end. Because it's got to the point where I see, I see computer games as work. Because I, it's weird. After doing this for so long, I begin to enjoy it more. Because I've set everything else up right, okay? I'm happy to start, I've chosen to start. So I now see computer games as a distraction, all right? Eliminate your distractions. I now see it as a distraction. So in my mind, I'm kind of like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I actually want to start working. 
and it's it's re- I cannot explain it. It's really weird. I used to be like, oh, I don't want to work. I want to play computer games. Now it's the other way around. I, ah, I want to do work. I don't want to play computer games. And I see computer games more as work. And it's probably because I've set myself up right for this. And I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, but I'm, I, what I'm telling you is if you just do, if you start off small as well, if you're doing Pomodoros, just do 25 minutes and then end it. And then the next day do an hour and a half, you know, and then end it. Get used to it. Just do it in small chunks. But if you do, do this long enough, it becomes a habit. And once you've got that habit down, and I'm talking a couple of months down the line or maybe six months down the line, once you've got that habit down, you probably don't want to stop. You probably don't want, you know, you probably actually quite enjoy it. You get used to working. It's weird. It's such a weird thing. And then you start thinking, no, these are the distractions. This is, I don't want to do that sort of stuff. I don't want to play computer games. I don't want to play Facebook. <laughs> and it's kind of weird if you think about it this way. So imagine, I you don't know, Minecraft or something. You think, oh, Minecraft's fun, right? Let's say if you enjoy it. It's like, actually, it's not. You're grinding away, making, like, through the dirt, and you're grinding through the stone, and you're making cobblestone. It's just like, what's the point? What am I building here? Whereas this, I'm working towards something bigger. I'm working towards something in real life. And what you realize with the Pomodoro technique and all this other stuff is that actually this is delayed gratification. What computer games give you is dopamine every five seconds. Yay, you've got another diamond. Yay, you've got you've you've scrolled up on Twitter. Yay, right. That that's dopamine hit over and over and over again. What this says is there's no dopamine maybe in this area, unless you have snacks and stuff, which we'll come to, uh, break. Uh, but there's no dopamine. But once you finish the task, oh, look where you are. You're in a much better position than you were or would be if you hadn't put the work in. So it's delayed gratification. So maybe um, wherever it is, challenge. Maybe every Monday when you release that video tick, you might actually get a dopamine rush of amazingness because you're like, oh, these people love this video um, or hate this one. Uh, or whatever, right? And so if you've got a deadline and it's like, yes, I did that deadline, celebrate it, which we'll get to, but yes, brilliant, right? And so it's delayed gratification and this and all this will get you in that frame of actually, I can I can wait till my reward comes, right? But we'll get to that anyway. Tip number 14 is break. So I said about five minute breaks and how I don't take them. I am actually terrible at taking breaks because I'm like, once I've started, I'm like, <gasps> and I'm in the frame of mind. But I have to admit this because I do like 70 hours a week. And recently I've kind of come to the conclusion that all right, I need to stop being quite so hard on myself. I need to have a bit more breaks. And I also need to, if I need a day off, I need to take it rather than burning out. So it's, you know, so I'm like, oh, maybe 65 hours a week is probably better. Whatever. The point of the matter is that I don't take enough breaks. So I'm giving you this advice because I've been through the motions several times now. You're going to get burnt out. And you, and once you are burnt out, you're going to do less work for a while until you finally get over the, the burnout. Uh, and you're also, it's kind of like a reward, which we'll come to again. But if you do all this stuff and you, you, know, you have that 25 minutes and you do really well in that 25 minutes, reward yourself with that break. Have a drink of water, get a pack of crisps, do whatever you need to do. For the smokers out there, which I get, it's related to a diet, but sort of, uh, go and have a smoke, uh, but have a break and re- relax again, and then do another 25 minutes. And once you've done your um, three sessions of Pomodoro, have a half an hour break, then go back to it, um, whatever, but have that break, have that day off. Reward yourself with a day off because you need it every so often. So that's my advice. And don't feel guilty about taking breaks. I do. And it's really hard. And I'm working on it. But don't feel guilty about taking breaks. Because once you get in the right frame of mind with this, and you are working solidly, and you love working, because you are a worker, you won't want to take breaks. And it's not good. Um, When I used to work at the retail store, if you got a break, it was a miracle. Um, and I used to come home with headaches because I hadn't eaten, or if I had eaten, I'd just, you know, running around the warehouse eating food, you know. It's not good. Take a break, you need it. Tip number 15, finish. 
actually finish the project. This is the aim of all this, is yeah. we're actually finished. There's no point getting halfway through. You know, if you, I'm a writer, I'm going to write half a book. No. Finish the damn thing, right? Finish the damn book. And if you're like, oh, I, I don't know if I like it anymore, finish it. NaNoWriMo is a good example. You start off really excited. Yeah, I'm going to write a novel in 30 days. And by about day eight, you're like, I hate my life, right? Because <laughs> you just want it to end. Oh, I picked the wrong subject. Oh, I should have chosen this. Oh, I've made a mistake. Fine. Just think to, think about it this way. You dead excited when you started. You wanted to do the, the work. You really, you know, there's a deadline. There's everything. Wouldn't it be better, instead of giving up, you just saw it through. You can do something for 30 days. You can do something for a week. Oh, I really hate this topic. I've got to write this yesterday. Oh, I hate hammering nails into a piece of wood. Just finish the task, get it done. And if you want to change, change afterwards, but finish it first, all right? And this is very important. If you get in the habit of failing every week, you will fail every week. If you get in the habit of winning every week, like me now, when those two videos that I've had were, one was a day late because the PSU died, uh, and the other one was late because I, it rendered out so long that I just couldn't get it out on time. I, I didn't realize. Um, I feel guilty. I'm like, ah, I released videos going, I'm sorry that it's late because this is, I, I'm not used to this. Because I'm so used to fin like finishing the task that I don't, it, it's just alien to me. I, I feel like I've let everybody down because I haven't finished. I let myself down, even though those two things were out on my, um, hands and it's a weird mentality to have I guess but just get into that habit of finishing the task and it will soon you know you and this is about uh, splitting up as well if you oh you know I just need to read that page today read the page finished brilliant I finished okay I now, now I need to do a bit of essay writing yeah I finished that way you know and this is the point like split if you split it down you finish the little tasks not the big task it might, you know Stalingrad still not done it I've been working on it for two years but I, yes, I finished Glance's books and I've finished most of Dave, Jason D. Mark's books, you know, but I finished like, oh, I finished this chapter today. Oh, I've done this. Little victories like that build up to the big victories. And that's absolutely essential. And once you get in the habit of winning a lot, yeah, you'll get failures and you'll feel bad about it, but you'll want to do better next time because you don't want to fail again. And that's, that's how you get into it. So make sure you finish the tasks, even if you don't like them. It's not the point. The, the finishing the task is actually more important than whether you like the task or not. And this is where all this comes in. It doesn't matter if you don't like what you're doing. Um, because when sometimes, you know, I love this job. But if I was not in the right frame of mind, I still do it, right? Because it doesn't matter whether I'm motivated or not to do it. I set myself up to win it. And I do the task. And then maybe I'll get back into the inspiration side of it later on. Um, but all this is designed so that I will finish the tasks, even if it takes a little bit longer, even if I'm not in the right frame of my mind to do it, even if I'm ill, which I was the other week, uh, I will still finish the task because it's that's how important. This is probably as important as everything else. Like, this is very important. You need to finish the task. You need to get in the habit of finishing those tasks. So finish. Number 16 is track. You need to track. And the reason is so that you can look back and go, you know what, I've done more work than I thought I did. Oh, actually, I've been doing like, a, you know, an hour and a half a day, every single day, and look where it's got me. It's got me to 300,000 words for Stalingrad. Wow, you know, and it's impressive. It's impressive what you can do. Um, I have trackers, uh, you can use an app, but I have trackers, I use a spreadsheet, and I just track how many hours I do per week. And currently it's nearly, it's just gone on to 70 hours because my granddad died the other week and I ended up, only doing 30 hours that week, so that dropped it down. But I was averaging about 70 hours a week, and uh, I was also ill, which didn't help. Uh, so I was averaging 30, uh, 70 hours a week, I'm now averaging about 67, something like that. And uh, so it's good, it's like 67 hours a week. So when I say, hey, I'm doing 67 or 70 hours a week, I am, because I've tracked it. And then I can look back and go, oh yeah, oh, that, that's how I do it. And I also, what I also do is split it up into uh, light work, which is work where it's not that intensive. I'm, I'm probably distracted in that sort of thing, like planning or whatever else. But if I've got deep work, and this comes from the book Deep Work, um, if, if I'm 100% focused and I'm on the task and I'm owning it, 
and nothing else is distracting me. I've got eliminated all this. I've done this. No YouTube's on. Blah blah. blah. Then I will I will count that as deep work hours. And then I'll add up all my hours in the week. How many breaks did I take? So on and so forth. And I'll track that, and I can see and go, oh, this week I did forty hours of deep work. Last week I did 50 hours. What was the difference? Oh, I had more sleep, did I? Oh, I had more food or better diet or, oh, I, oh yeah, I um, organized myself better or whatever it is. Track and you can learn. Those who do not learn from their mistakes are doomed to repeat them. History, right? So, you know, those who do not learn from history. So track everything that you can. Um, might need to look up some uh, videos on how to track, but I would just recommend count the hours, count the breaks, Count breaks is work, uh, in my opinion. I do a bit of both, but uh, track, track everything. And finally, number 17 is reward. And what you have to do here is do two types of reward. One is short-term reward and one is long-term reward. So you want short-term reward to be something like, I don't know, uh, every Pomodoro you do, you get a pack of crisps, not a pack of crisps, that's too much. Maybe. Part of a pack of crisps, right? Oh, I can get a few more crisps if I do 25 minutes. Okay, uh, so maybe you eat a full pack of crisps by the end of your Pomodoro session. Or by the end of your Pomodoro, you're allowed a biscuit. Or by the end of your Pomodoro, you're allowed to, I don't know, go and get a fizzy drink or something. Um, something like that, I don't know. That's, it's kind of hard. Or maybe uh, maybe every Pomodoro you do, you put a pound in a, in a or a dollar in a piggy bank or something and then you get the reward at the end of the week um big rewards like yes i finished that really amazing project i've been working on for two years starting around maybe i can have a week off right uh maybe i can go on holiday and have something plan it out have something way ahead so that you've got something to go for i suck at this i absolutely suck at this um but i do reward myself every evening like you know what I can choose whether I want to work now. Um, you know, do I want to do a bit more work? Yes or no. If I don't want to do work, what can I do instead? Should I play computer games for an hour or two? Should I watch that DVD? Should I, I don't know, um, go and play guitar for half an hour? Whatever, whatever my reward is, that's my reward. And then in the future, one of the rewards recently, I spent my um, Christmas vouchers on it and some money from my patrons, which was the camera. The camera that I'm using now, and it's way better than my old camera. And it's, to me, it's like, yeah, it's work, but it's it's great. It's like, I love this camera, it's brilliant. Um, because it's like, oh, it's a reward. I use this all the time. I'm gonna reward myself with a better camera, better audio, whatever else, better lighting, hopefully one day. Reward, reward yourself. Actually, you know what? I am gonna work today, but I'm gonna work on something that I want to work on not something that everybody else wants to work on. And that's actually a very good one. So in my sort of job, um, I work on projects that I want to work on maybe one day a week, two days a week. I might just do something that's completely not necessarily something that needs to be done for the next deadline or even the deadline afterwards. So at the minute, I'm still doing Stalingrad and doing other subjects as well because I'm interested in those things. When I was at university and I was doing history, it's like, okay, I finished what I need to do. I don't really feel like going home or I've got a lecture in an hour. What can I do? Oh, there's economics books behind me. I'll start reading them, right? Because I'm interested in economics. I always have been, but yeah. So it's like, ah, oh. or I used to go to um, the history section and look up stuff that's nothing to do with the subjects at all. Um, had nothing to do with anything that I was looking into because it was like, oh, that's interesting. I'll, I'll check that and I'll read that. I read um, I read uh, Age of Extremes. I'm not, I'm not sure all of it. This is a new copy. Uh, I read Age of Extremes just in my spare time at university when I was in the uh, libraries. I read that and I also read most of the fall of the British Empire by Lawrence because yeah, I, I had time to do it. So. Yeah, it's surprising. Like, actually, you know, I'm interested in the rise and fall of the British Empire. Okay, I'll read that book. Um, that's what you do. You reward yourself. It, it is kind of rewarding. Some people might say that's work. You come up with your own rewards, but uh, make sure you reward yourself. 
for doing all this, for actually doing the work, make sure you reward yourself because it's all about that. If you work, 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 work and no play, right? This is what I was saying before, you're going to burn yourself out. You're not going to be in a good position uh, for the next time you need to do work. So you need to make sure the cycle's right. And these are the two that I get wrong all the time, if I'm honest. The uh, break and the reward. I need to do that more often. Um, and I'm not perfect when it comes to all of this. I'm giving you... This it, This is me at my best. Right? If if I hit this once every four weeks, it's good. Right? Um, but this is this is genuinely worked for me. And I'm getting tons done. And it's great. It's I've never been as productive in my life. <laughs> this last year, I cannot believe what I have done. And half of it you haven't seen because it's that's the problem with this line of work. It's all stuff behind the scenes for the next project, which hasn't been released yet. Stalingrad. Uh, so, yeah. I hope that answers your question. I think it does. Let me know if you've got any questions and let me know if this helps. Bye for now.